A million dollar car with a heart made of carbon fiber. Up close, you might see the haunches of a cheetah, defined muscle flanks, and air scooping snorkel. This is innovation inspired by nature, the next generation of ultimate supercars bringing race car performance onto our city's roads. I looked for inspiration to almost a, a different approach that has ever been used, which is biomimicry. And I've always been very interested in animals and in nature and these kind of things. And if you look at it, that really is the ultimate type of inspiration because nobody really sits down to design a beautiful uh, organism or, 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 or animal or anything like that. Furthermore, they're, they're timeless and uh, they're designed through evolution, so they're actually fit for purpose much more than somebody trying to just stylize something or make it look beautiful. From one of the most influential automobile designers of our time, the man behind iconic cars such as the Mini Hatch, Fiat 500, BMW X5, Maserati MC12, and Ferrari F430, we wonder what does it take to go from pen and paper to the real thing? When we design a car, um, it takes three to five years to actually get the car really prepared for the road. And then it has to look fresh for another three years before you do a facelift to it. So in reality, the designer has to almost think eight to ten years in the future as he's designing the car. We actually start out with the design process. There's nothing more creative than a person sitting down with a, a ball, ballpoint pen and a clean sheet of paper. And then you'll maybe settle between two and three idea sketches that look good. And then you'll do what we call um, a quarter scale model. So it's made out of clay. As soon as we get the shape very close to what we want, we digitize it, and then you start to fine tune the surfaces. Um, and then you get to a stage where you think that's perfect. You can look at it in 3D or holograms, uh, and then you can present that car as the final design if everybody's happy with it. It continues into the aerodynamic testing phase, crash testing, ergonomics, uh, and it has to pass all these tests and legislation. As soon as it does that, then it's ready for production. A lot of people will say, well, what's the sense of a car like this? Because who really wants to go out and spend a million dollars for a car? Well, a car like this, you don't need really a car like this. But you want it. It's an emotional purchase. You desire it. And there are quite a few people, luckily, that can, can have that, that liberty to do it. If buying an exotic car is the epitome of emotional purchasing, then the Middle East, and Dubai in particular, is one where the passion for top-end cars extends across brands. In 2012, Rolls-Royce saw a 26% sales growth year-on-year, -year, while the UAE accounted for a quarter of all global Bugatti sales. Ferrari saw a steady rise of near 5%, and with a new $1 million car in its lineup, McLaren sales are keeping on the right track. McLaren's been on sale now for approximately one year. We had our first full year last year and it's going really well for us in the Middle East and in particular in Dubai and, and Abu Dhabi. Uh, the Middle East is, has been very strong for us. We, we overachieved on all our targets throughout the Middle East in Bahrain, Kuwait, Qatar, Saudi Arabia and the UAE. Um, but Dubai in particular um, is really strong. Uh, we, um, the Dubai, our retailer in Dubai, Al Habtal Motors, they were number one in the world for December sales. They were number one in the world for October sales last year. They're very strong again at the start of this year. Uh, so it's, it's very exciting to see that. The, there's a real momentum building up for McLaren in Dubai. With such high performance sales last year and major auto players expecting another year of strong demand, the top end of the UAE's automobile sector clearly remains in the fast lane. June Wrigley, Emirates 24-7.